It's Maxwell House Coffee Time, starring George Burns and Gracie Allen. Here's Meredith Wilson with his chiffon arrangement of If I Loved You. George and Gracie would find them very much excited over a letter they've just received. Oh, darling, it's almost unbelievable. Five thousand dollars. Here it is, in black and white. Read the letter again. Okay, it's from William Walsh, attorney at law. Uh Uh-huh. Mr. George Burns, dear sir, under the terms of the will of your late uncle, Marvin W. Burns, you've been left the sum of five thousand dollars. Kindly call at my office for further details. Oh, dear, sweet, adorable Uncle Marvin. Uh-huh. You know him, Mr. Lovin. That's right. My very favorite person among your entire family. Too bad I never met him. <laughs> I don't remember him very well myself. Haven't seen him since I was a kid. Oh, I'm so happy for you, George. Just think $5,000 for your very own. To spend just as you wish. Now you can buy the things you've done without for so long. That's right. A mink coat, a diamond bracelet, <laughs> gorgeous gown. Oh, you're so lucky, George. <laughs> yes, I'm fortunate. <laughs> Doesn't look like I'll see much of this money. Oh, of course you will, dear. We'll split the money. I'll spend half and you spend half. It's a deal. I'll buy the coat and you buy the bracelet. <laughs> Gracie, it's my 5000 any objection if I buy a hat? Of course not. You can buy two or three hats. Well, thanks. Just don't get anything in red. I look terrible in that color. <laughs> this is fine. You buy the whole store out, and I can't even have a new hat. Well, your turn will come, George. The next uncle is yours. <laughs> Let's go over and see the lawyer. <laughs> Ah, yes. So you're Mr. Burns, the legatee. The what? The legatee. That's the one who gets the money. You see, in law, everyone has a legal status. Oh. Well, this is my wife, Mr. Walsh. Yes, the Fendi. (laughs) How do you do, Mr. Walsh? I'm glad to know you, Mrs. Burns. Well, shall I read the will? Oh, yes. This is exciting, isn't it? In the movies, when the relatives are gathered around to hear a will read, the lights always go out and... Somebody gets murdered. (laughs) Movies are pretty silly, don't you think? (laughs) Uh, Yes, indeed. Uh, Won't you sit down, Mrs. Burns? Uh, No, thanks. I'll stand here where I can watch the light switch. (laughs) Go right ahead, 
have, Mr. Walsh. Uh, you can skip the body of the will, Mr. Walsh. Just uh, read my bequest. Very well. Mm, this will is almost ready to come apart. It was written over 30 years ago. Ah, here we are. To my nephew, little Georgie Burns, I do hereby bequeath the sum of $5,000. Oh, he must have loved the judge. Yes. Providing the aforesaid sum is used for my nephew's college education. Oh. <laughs> what? I feel that this is the only way I can get the little bum out of the pool room and into a hall of learning. <laughs> Wait a minute. Does this mean I don't get the money unless I go to college? It means exactly that. No college, not a cent. That means I get no money. Oh, but you can go to college. Huh? I'll buy you some dungarees and a sloppy Joe sweater, and, and tomorrow we'll turn in our car for one with no doors. <laughs> Gracie, I'm not going to start the college at my age. Why not? How do you think I'll feel associating with kids 18, 19, and 20? Well, haven't you been happy with me for the last three years? <laughs> Forget it. I will not go to college. Come along, Gracie. <laughs> Now, Gracie, I don't want to discuss it any further. But, darling, I'm only thinking of you, of your success. Uh, a man just can't succeed without a college education. Abraham Lincoln became president of the United States. All right, but think what he might have been with a college education. <laughs> sure, might have been working for the William Morris Agency. Yes, yes. In, a, in every walk of life, you'll find the college man most successful. Now, take the world of sports. Name a great football team. Uh, Purdue. College men, every one of them. <laughs> Gracie mm, Take the world of business Name a successful businessman Henry Ford Did he go to college? No Name another one <laughs> William Newton Did he go to college? No Name another one <laughs> Henry Kaiser Did he go to college? No Take the world of art Oh, fuck <laughs> I'm not going to college. Oh, George, have you no pride? Let's say you're with a group of intellectuals. One says, I'm Jenkins, USC 27. Another says, I'm Caldwell, UCLA 29. What do you say? I'm Burns, PS4. <laughs> well, uh, people would stare at you. They'd also stare if I said Yale 51. <laughs> Hi, Gracie. Hello, George. Hello, Meredith. Meredith, are you a college man? You bet I am, Gracie. Four years at Iowa State Dental. <laughs> Iowa State Dental? Yeah. You mean you wanted to be a dentist? No, I wanted to be a musician, but uh, I went to that school because it was in my hometown. <laughs> <laughs> you see, uh, <clears throat> there was a woman there that I was pretty crazy about. Why, no, <laughs> What was her name? Mama. Oh, oh, your mother. Mm -hmm. And you went to a dental school just to be near her. Yeah, but uh, I was too tender-hearted to be much of a dentist, I guess. It hurt me every time I pulled a tooth. You poor boy. I guess I should have practiced on somebody else. <laughs> College really sharpened this kid up. Yeah. How did you ever find time to study music? Well, in between filling cavities, I'd practice on my flute. Had to give it up, though. You did, huh? Yeah. One day, a fella came in with two front teeth missing, and it got me confused. I played Semper Fidelis on his bridge work and filled the holes in my flute. <laughs> well, Meredith, it must take a lot of studying to learn dentistry. No, no. Pulling teeth isn't so hard. Just takes a quick jerk. I'll bet you were the quickest one there. <laughs> Oh, I was pretty fast, all right. Oh, goodbye, Meredith. <coughs> Good night, all. Good night, all. Well, there, now. You see what college did for Meredith? And it shouldn't happen to me. <laughs> oh, now, George, don't be stubborn. Go to college. Learn things. Learn to split atoms. <laughs> I don't want to split atoms. That's right. That's right. Stay ignorant. Pretty soon, we'll be the only family still using the old-fashioned one-piece atom. <laughs> You're wasting your time. You don't 
know, just don't learn to split atoms. You learn things like, like chemistry. You can reel off the specific gravity of H2SO4. I'm in the radio business. Suppose I don't know the specific gravity of uh, H2SO4. Why do I need it? Uh, Forget the whole thing. I'm not going to call it. Well, hi, Burns. What's up? Oh, a little argument. Gracie thinks the family breadwinner should go to college. Well, George, I agree. You love it, Gracie. <laughs> <laughs> Not Gracie, me. My uncle left me $5,000, but it has to be used for education. Yes. Now, I think this is a perfect opportunity for George to pick up his education where he left off. Well, of course it is, George, and I can recommend a wonderful kindergarten. <laughs> Scream a day, this kid. Uh, Bill, Better be... than Edwin. Uh-uh. <laughs> Bill, be serious. This is very important. George thinks he's too old for those college kids, but I say put one of those freshman caps on him and a floppy Joe sweater and he'll look as good as the others. Well, even better. George will have the only floppy Joe sweater that looks like floppy Joe is still in it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm only kidding, Gracie. Gosh, college is wonderful. I'm still loyal to my alma mater, Stanford. I love her and wouldn't do anything to hurt her. And to show you how I feel about George, I suggest you send him to Stanford. Gee, thanks, Bill. What would he study, Bill? Well, nothing. They'd study George. (laughs) Show this comedian the dog (laughs) race. So long, college boy. Go. (laughs) Wise guy. I guess he thinks I'm not smart enough to go to college. I ought to show him. Not a boy, George. Maybe if I did go, he wouldn't feel so darn superior. Yeah, now you're talking, George. And remember, it's the only way you can get that $5,000 your uncle left you. Yeah. By golly, Gracie, I think I'll take a crack. Oh, I'm so glad, dear. When people used to call you stupid looking, I'd say it was because you hadn't been to a college. Now when they call you stupid looking, I won't have to make those excuses. <laughs> George, I've been checking all the colleges, and I found the perfect one for you. Swell. What is it? Yale, Harvard, Princeton? Beverly Hills Tech. (laughs) Beverly Hills Tech? Yeah, you see, most colleges are pretty hard to get into. They have entrance requirements like a high school diploma or a certain IQ rating or scholastic credit. Well, what are the requirements to get into Beverly Hills Tech? You have to live in Beverly Hills. (laughs) I think I can qualify. Now, hurry over and enroll. Oh, gosh, Gracie. I can't walk in there and enroll as a freshman. I feel silly. Well, all right, darling. I'll do it for you. Would you mind? Oh, not at all. I know how bashful you are. Well, you were even too bashful to get our marriage license. So I had to do that. Yeah. <laughs> and this won't cost me anything. <laughs> I'll go right over. Cut off. <laughs>
Sorry, Coach. The football team is your problem. But, Dean, it's the worst team in the history of Beverly Hills Tech. Not one of them kids I got ever seen a football before. Ever saw a football before, Coach? <laughs> if I had one kid on the team that used to play football in high school, I could have did ten times better. <laughs> could have done ten times better, Coach? Now, here, here's the big game coming up. And look at the outfit I got to throw in there. Why, we ain't got no chance. <laughs> ain't got any chance. <laughs> well, Dean, all I'm saying is 11 fairly healthy girls from Hollywood High could mop the field with us. If I had only one guy with a little experience, just one guy that ever played football before... Well, I'm afraid I can't help you. However, if you'll wait here in my office while I mark some papers, we'll talk it over when I get back. I'll be right here, Dean. Good, good. Hmm. Some team to go into the big game with. Boy, it's a good thing we're playing Sismo Beach teachers. <laughs> <laughs> if I could only get my hands on one guy... Oh, how do you do? Is this the Dean's office? Yeah, that's right. Good. I want to enroll my husband, George Burns, in your school. Can he play football? Football? Uh, is that important? Important? If he can't play football, I don't want him here. Oh, oh, I see. Well, in that case, he happens to be the greatest football player who ever wore a glove. <laughs> wore a glove? Mm-hmm. What team did he play for? What team? Yeah. What uh, name a good one. The Fighting Irish? That's it. That's it. <laughs> well, so your husband played on Notre Dame's team? No, certainly not. When he went to Notre, he played on the men's team. <laughs> <laughs> what position did he play? <laughs> what position did he play? Yeah. Oh, all of them. Standing up, sitting down, flat on the <laughs> No, no, no. I mean, did he play in the line or was he a back? Why, um, he, he was a back. A back. A back. That's just what I need. A fellow who can kick. Did he play full? Oh, no, he never touches a step. <laughs> <laughs> Lady, look, all I'm trying to find out is whether your husband punts. Whether he what? Punts. Well, if he does, I've never caught him at it. <laughs> Murder. Excuse me a minute, lady. Hey, Steve. Yeah, coach. Did you ever hear of a football player named uh, George Burns? Burns. Burns. Hey, there was a George Burns Kowitz, all American in Notre Dame. Yeah, they called him Rubber Hips. That's the guy. He shortened his name. Oh, thanks, Steve. Okay, coach. Hey, lady. Lady, have your husband here at two o'clock this afternoon in his football uniform. Oh, then you let him enroll. Let him? I gotta have him. Hey, why didn't you tell me your husband was the man with the rubber hips? Well, gee, I didn't think his girdle was that important. <laughs> Meredith Wilson and In the Still of the Night.
morning, Mrs. Burns. You <laughs> need your mail. Oh, thank you. Uh, by the way, Mr. Postman, do you know where I could borrow a football uniform? The college insists on one. Holy smoke, I knew they were in trouble, but I didn't think USC would ask women to play. <laughs> oh, no, 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 it's not for me, it's for George. They're in worse trouble than I thought. <laughs> oh, now, you misunderstand. He's going to Beverly Hills Tech, not USC, and they want him to wear a uniform. Well, you can borrow mine. I was a big football star in college, you know. Really? Oh, yes. I was in every game, every minute. Fighting, tackling, blocking, smashing, <laughs> running, plunging. Goodness. At the end of the season, I was all collegiate, all conference, all American, and all pooped. <laughs> I'll never forget the big game. When I left the bench, the crowd roared. I ripped them apart. <laughs> My pants had caught on the nail. Well, I hope they're packed. If George is going to wear them, I don't want his first public appearance to be such a public appearance. <laughs> oh, they're as good as new. And my helmet hasn't even been worn. I always played without it. Oh, uh, weren't you ever kicked in the head? I must have been. Have you seen my wife? <laughs> well, I'll go over to the house and bring you my football uniform. Goodbye, Mrs. Burns. Remember, keep smiling. <laughs> Dear, the pants fit you fine. Now put on the jersey. I still don't understand why I should have to wear a football uniform to school. Well, I don't know. It's some sort of a requirement. You don't have to play. But suppose they put me in the game and give me the ball. Give it back to them. We don't want it. <laughs> what <a> great. <laughs> what's uh, what's so funny? All oh, those football pants. <laughs> All that padding in the front, and even more padding in the oh. Pardon me, that's you. <laughs> Not all of it. Hand me the jersey. Here. Hey, the postman really had wide shoulders. Yes, and a narrow waist. You better wear it upside down. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be all right when I get these shoulder pads in. See? They go on like this. Then the jersey over them. Mm -hmm. There. How do I look? Why, George, it's marvelous. Oh, I'll be so proud when I see you at college. Sure. I'll say to myself, somewhere inside that uniform is my husband. I look pretty good, huh? Oh, perfect. Except for that number on your back. What's, uh, what's wrong with the number? Oh, it says 55, and you really look younger. <laughs> or 54. You know, George, I almost wish you were going to play football. I, I could sit in the stands and cheer you on with the Beverly Hills Tech alma mater song. Tech has got an alma mater song? Oh, it's wonderful. Listen, and I'll sing it to you. There's a tech in Indiana. There's a tech in Texas, too. There's a tech down south in Alabama. There's a tech up north in Massachusetts. There's a tech that comes before the cholera. There's a tech that comes before the class. But the tech that's in the hills of Beverly is the tech that I'm glad I'm at. There's a tech in Indiana. There's a tech. All right, gang, all right. In a few minutes, we'll be going out there to play Pismo Beach teachers. Here comes the substitution on the field. It's number 55. Now let's see who it is. Oh, no. This can't be the George Burns I know. He leaves the bench. He trips and falls on his face. <laughs> yes, it's the George Burns I know. <laughs> Anything can happen now. Pismo Beach is kicking off. It's coming right to Burns. He takes it on his 25. He's up to the... No. He's back on the 20. <laughs> back to the 15. He's tackled on the 10 and thrown back over his own goal line. No, wait, wait. 
Folks, it was a trick. A hidden ball trick. And Penny is over for the winning touchdown. That win burns food everybody. He's the hero of the game. Even I thought you had the ball. Oh, there was nothing, Coach. Oh, now, Judge, don't be modest. You were wonderful. Oh, you're not kidding. How did he fool everybody? Well, he had something under his jersey that looked like a football. Where'd he get it? From eating too much. <laughs> 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 